Today, we're going to take an old clothes dryer and turn it into a shop heater. I and you probably have never seen anybody else do it before, so keep watching if you want to see the first ever dryer shop heater. So here is a free roadside gym. Picked this up about a week ago. Uh, been looking for a little while. Uh, they pop up all the time. They go pretty fast, but if you take your time, you can find them for free for nothing. This is a natural gas dryer. Um, everything I do here would work for an electric dryer as well. I've taken apart a ton of these dryers and fixed them and stuff like that. I actually, the problem with this one was the door didn't shut all the way, so it wasn't activated and had it taped. So I already fixed it. So it's a perfectly functioning gas dryer, and I've had it running in the shop for a while as a heater, but it is, you know, just testing it out to see if it would work. But it is humongous. It is a dryer. And so we don't need pretty much any of the top. All the gas mechanism is located down in the bottom. So we're just going to start stripping it down. You're going to learn how they work, um, the differences. I'll talk to you about the differences between gas and electric and how if you wanted to make an electric, you know, you could do it. Natural gas is the cheapest, besides wood, way to heat stuff, though. So if you want something cheap, electric is probably four to five times as much as natural gas, if you have natural gas. If you don't have natural gas, um, then you don't. But um, here we go. Let's we'll start ripping it apart. All these are pretty much the same, all the brands. This one's a Frigidaire. Um, I've ripped apart a lot of Maytags, uh, Kenmore, the Whirlpool stuff. Um, and they're all pretty much made the same. You got a gas, if it's a natural gas one, you got the heating element all on the bottom. If it's an electric, you know, I know the Maytags and stuff had the electric on the bottom as well. But some of the, the Kenmore Whirlpools had the electric element on the back. And that makes stuff a little bit more difficult, but we're just going to start chewing through it. I was actually looking for an older one without all the fancy electronics, but we'll deal with it. So it's just a matter of taking everything apart, everything off, and disassembling it all until we get down to the bare bones. We've made a buck so far. Got some SIM cards and a washer. It's paying for itself already. Okay, this shows you exactly how it works. The flame or the electric heating element sits in there and it goes up this chamber right here out into the drum through this vent and gets sucked down into this little impeller blower motor. The back side of the motor actually runs the drum, so that spins your drum. So one side spins your drum, the other side runs a fan and it just blows it right out there. So it's a suction system. So we can't actually put a blower in front of the flame to blow through it. Like most forced air heaters, we have to actually suck through. Um, so we'll have to do the same thing. It can handle the heat, but not all of the heat. You'll notice in the back here, because it goes up through here, it actually has some vents back here. So these vent holes. So it actually pulls in fresh air because the heat's too much. So it actually pulls in fresh air just from around through the vented back. So it pulls in fresh air with the hot air through here so it's sucking th that the blower fan is sucking air from the flame and just from the room and drawing it across the clothes and out. Now there are safety limit switches everywhere on this and I've played around with it. When it was fully assembled, I was playing around with it for a couple days, just seeing how everything functioned. So, there is, if there's not enough suction out of here, then the flame will come back and hit these high limit, these temperature switches, and shut itself off immediately. So if you don't have enough pull, it'll su shut itself off. Now, the air coming through here, because this is all plastic, you know, it's probably PA66, so it can handle high temperature. But if it gets too hot in here through this sensor, there's one over here, then it'll automatically shut off the flame. So there's safety sensors everywhere so you don't melt on everything. But pretty much all we have to do is take the outlet here and connect it over to here. Okay, we flipped the entire motor assembly around and I got this all kind of just mocked up. The motor's not bolted down or anything else. I've got the gas hooked up to it. My gas line is only about 10 feet from the wall. So I had to bring it over here. This is the tube that used to go like this into the back of the dryer with the air vents in the back. And I taped all those closed 
because I don't have a perfect seal against the suction right here and I it's gonna pull in air around the side so we'll set this on just kind of lean it up right there so this can suck air through there um, gas is on everything's on this has a little um, like a carbon element instead of a sparker so it just gets red hot and then the gas starts flowing and there's a little optical sensor down there to see if there's light but doesn't see a flame so we've got the control panel all hooked up right here so we just hit start and move on the motor the little kick is not bolted down there it goes now it should start going red Blown red. The flame lit. So the flame is going right now, and that's putting out a ton of heat. Oh yeah, feels nice and warm. Now, if I'm not pulling enough air out of that tube, those little sensors on top are going to shut off the gas. If it doesn't think that, if it thinks that's going to overheat at all, it'll just pull. It'll just shut the whole the gas valves off. Okay, it's laid out exactly how it goes in the machine, but I want this flipped around and up on edge. So there's already beautiful mounts in, built into the casing. This plastic thing has tabs it slides into and bolts down nice, and this has little protrusions and screw holes. So what I'm going to do is cut the base across here and then flip it and weld it to the side. So just plasma cut that out real fast. This is one of the mounting holes or else I would have just went straight across. And then I cut the feet off of this, these little screw in feet, because I want to mount those back to there. So, because they're on the other side. But then this, the motor mounts here, the fan over here, the motor right here, this will flip around and just weld up on its side. So now the motor is kind of mounted sideways right in here. So I have all the motor mount and everything. And then this will just weld down to this surface. It'll be nice and secure. Okay, I've got that welded on, flipped and welded on, and I got the feet back welded on, so I got little adjustable black feet on every single one. Um, so the motor's all mounted, and I lined it up just so the back of the motor, you see it has these little two tabs that hold on to this plastic tabbing, and then there's just two screws, but that's all that kind of holds it in there, but I also made it so that it sits on the housing as well, just for support, right at 90. Now this, uh, what to do with this? Uh, I measured the angle and it sits back at about five degrees, anywhere between five and seven, something like that. Um, this tube does, I guess so that any heat would rise and go out of it. But I'm gonna move it back, I think probably almost like four inches or so. So I'm gonna move it way back to here. Um, this is where it was mounted and I'm just gonna move it all the way back just so I have plenty of room at this end. I just want it to, I don't want it to protrude out the back, you know? So I'm gonna scoot it back as far as possible so the back can be fairly flush. Okay, you can see that, and then I got the couple extra holes right back here, you know, as opposed to all these holes we had. Now, these are acting like some of those back holes where it can pull through, but we'll put this, we we'll position this on here, and then this will position just like that, and then we can screw in from the side to mount this better, and then there's a screw hole on this to mount this to this. And then that should pull enough air and enough from the sides. And if that's too much, I can I can wrap that um, with another piece of sheet metal around there. And if it's not enough, I can drill a couple more holes on the back side. Okay, functionally, it's all put together. This was moved back, that's all attached. Um, these were cross braces that were already just in the dryer, so I'm just cannibalizing everything. This was another one, and I mounted this top tube to it because it just kind of sits on there all the wiring is in all the safety stuff is still there everything that's required you know the optical sensor the heat sensor so if this pulls in too much air it gets too hot everything will shut down exactly like it should um 
Now we just have the control panel here. Turn it on. We'll tell it to give us a high dry and I can feel it pulling good air through there. Now give it a second and it should turn on its glowy thingy and light the flame and we should go. The glowing thing's turning on. Oh, pushing out hot air now. Nice, instantly. So I'll let it run for a minute and see if any of the safety triggers shut off. Now I got the sides, so now I got to sheet metal it, metal it up. I've just cut the little ends and I've taken my um, my angle grinder and I just lightly scored along that line. So you just score it, and then I've just the ends that I've cut, and then I can just. You get a perfect bend. You don't need no sheet metal break. Look at that. Beautiful. So this is a complete side. I mean, it didn't quite come over far enough. I could have tweaked it probably. And then this is this whole side. And I cut off a piece. That was the old back panel. And I just cut a piece out and bent it up for the back. So this goes on the back now. And there's a hole here to reconnect your gas line. But that spaces it. I mean, we're this far away from the hottest part, which is just right here. So nothing's even close to that. And now I'll just plastic weld them together best I can. So got the main computer and everything mounted in there. All the wiring is tucked in and nicely organized. It had all these little retainer nub things that I released every single one and then I put them all back in so every single wire isn't in the way of anything else. So we're good there. Then I mounted this right in the middle below the heat vent. And so above that, I have this piece that needs to be painted. So that trims that top piece out, heat comes out there. There'll be nothing there. Uh, bottom, didn't know what to do. This little piece is scabbed together from stuff that was on the back. And so that'll just kind of go right there. Has little louvers in case air needs to come through. I don't really think it does, but there's enough air gaps everywhere that um, that'll look like that. And I guess I'll paint that as well. Um, I'm not sure if it's all going white or I think I should paint it a different color, but this is white and I can't really paint that, so. Maybe it is going white. Well, ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you the world's first dryer shop heater. The only thing that I had to modify as far as the wiring was I just had to join the uh, door switch. So it always thinks the door is shut. I just couldn't leave it white. It looked like a dryer. It looked like it belonged in the laundry room. So we painted it up a little bit. It looks a little more industrial. It's not huge. And I've been running it for a while now. It actually works really good. So you can see, we'll show you this controls. So I can actually choose the temperature that I want it to be at. I can choose a time. I can wrinkle release myself if I want to. I can delay the start. So, technically, I guess I could turn this on. I don't know how... I, I guess I could, you know, the night before, I could set it for eight hours. And so, the next morning, it'll just kick on for an hour and a half and pre-warm the shop. So, there's some neat things and a lot of stuff you will never, ever use. Um, I used pretty much everything from the dryer down to... Even the, the light bulb that goes inside, if I long push this. Yeah, so, so even the light bulb inside, I drilled a little hole so you can kind of peek in there and see what's going on. And with the light bulb, you can pretty much see everything. Um, but I put that little hole there so I could see the flame. So I can see the flame, so I could just monitor the flame. 
and everything. Um, what would really be neat is if, I guess I could, I need to make a decal. I need to, or have somebody make me a decal just to relabel all that because that just looks stupid, you know. Or even some of this, of, you know, maybe I'll make up a sticker and just rename it all because most of the stuff I don't even need. Um, but it does have things like air drive, so I could just circulate air um, if I wanted to. The longest I can get it to go for is 90 minutes. That seems to be the, the absolute, I don't know, an hour and 45 if I put it on sanitize. So that's the longest I can make it go. Um, I've been running it for a while. Everything seems to work good. So I did go to Amazon and I bought a flexible hose for it. That's just with quick connect so I can just disconnect it in the summer and just move it out of the way um, with a, uh, you know, just a shut off valve gas line thing in there. So size wise, how does it compare? This is a small salamander slash forced air heater, kerosene diesel, and that's it. They're both sitting on um, dollies right now. So height wise, they're about the same. And this is length wise, they're about the same. This is probably about double the width though. So I'm double the width. This puts out 50,000 BTUs. This only puts out 20,000 BTUs, but this runs at like half the cost or less than the, um, what I'm able to get diesel for at 250 a gallon or so. But there you go. Like I said earlier in the video, if you were doing an electric one, it would be exactly the same. It would actually be a lot easier. I used a welder a fair amount in this video. Not necessary. I welded a bunch of pieces in, in there. Not necessary, it just makes it easier. Everything could have been done with sheet metal screws and everything else. Thanks for watching, guys. See you guys soon. Bye. Let's go play. Okay, let's leave them. Let's just, we gotta dry them. Leave them. Leave them. Here, watch out. Back up and see them. Let's turn on the light so you can see them. See him? Get him! See if we can get him to come out. Leave, no, don't no, jump. Try to drop that one. Leave it. Leave it. You got it? You got it? Be careful. There you go. Good job. The last one's stuck. Can you get it? Let's go ahead and get it. I'll roll it to you. You got it? Oh, no, no, no. Well, don't get in there. There you go. There you go.